the script and we'll... Oh my god, get, that how is many, so funny. How many well, that movies be... do you think you know the full quotes for them? No, we print it out, so you've got the, the script oh. and we just like table read. Like, we, did the, so we did the trivia Yeah. and we could do a table read instead. That'd be fun. That'd be great. That would be... That would be... <laughs> dude, the... Your thumbnail plus, you know, the title, it's like... <laughs> Era reads... Step Brothers. <laughs> you know? Something like that. No, no, no. You See, gotta call me Dragon. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's something yeah. like The Notebook. Oh, and something dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. You yeah. just want to make out, you slut. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty You're slut. a bird, I'm a bird. Yeah. Here. Enter. Oh, wait, you can't, you can't enter. Yeah. <laughs> I can enter. I've been to hotels before. He's gonna... Oh, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna set, yeah, set, set the in, scene up for him. sexier than before. Take a shower. Funny that. Yeah. You didn't tell me we were getting handsome for <laughs> this. Here. What the fuck? No, he's sitting oh, no, you're there. You're in the I'm on the, the uncomfortable yeah. format. Yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, he goes, he's got to get into his bed clothes. No, we're getting personal. <laughs> no, so Gary takes his pants off. Now I'm ready. Is, is the hat blocking, like, my eyes? Or Not at all. Okay. This is surprisingly fantastic. Sweet. Everything looks really good. It looks crisp. Yeah. Crisp. It looks clean. Crisp. Not and as clean there's as room room to my showers, but... A rumor of light? Yeah, you know what? I'm actually stoked with light out because he's gonna smell fantastic to sit next to him. You can't smell through the lens though. I'll take my shoes off. Oh, why are you with the lens? Nah. We're on the bed, might as well. Do it. I, People I just aren't gonna a, judge you. I'm keeping mine on because what's underneath the shoes nobody wants to experience. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, toes. Toes. You never know. Not like, these you'd dogs. be surprised how many people would like an error toe only fans page. Oh, that's dangerous. You'd be surprised. <sighs> yeah, we look. This will be my bad, I don't give a shit. Uh, Jesse, we just had an idea for the channel moving forward. Is <laughs> we print out scripts and we do table reads for famous movies and things. <laughs> we'll just do the yeah. we'll just act out the scene. Just act out the scene. Yeah. He's suggesting no the to... notebook. <laughs> The problem with yeah, that, you see him where you run into them, they jump into their arms and grab. What and do you want? Someone's just with a water what do you can, want? pouring water. <laughs> oh my god. Why are you all wet? Yeah. It's raining. Yeah, you get to the show with it. Oh, we had an interview. It's uh... I was gardening. <laughs> Should I like put my phone somewhere else? No. No. no this fine. is the yeah. most relaxed. We also have a lobby call at 345. Yeah, so we got to yeah. be yeah. Yeah. Gonna be yeah. quick. Well, we're on. We're recording. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with our friends, Jess and JT. Hello. Hi. From a, from a bit. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't read the, the title here, we're going to talk all about the brand new album. Pillow Talk. Because, yeah, Pillow, Pillow talk, talk. Yeah. But we don't get to do this very often where we actually get like just like bro out with our friends and talk about the things they've created. It's because it's, they live on the other side of the world. I know. Everyone in Australia is already sick of us. Yeah, that's true. No. Hey, he travelled to see me in the States. That means I did. he's not sick. I wrote my yet. first train for you. What? what? That sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, you've been on the train then. I've never been on that train before. Oh, that is fun. Yeah, it Thanks, was fun. Man. It was easy. It was painless. It was fun. I liked that. I yeah. liked that. Did you see any uh, interesting citizens? No, it was the good train. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a, <laughs> not the weird train. Yeah, not like a local crappy old station. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was cool. Was that? No. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Album, new album. We've got it. We want to talk about it because. Yeah. Is it your first time talking about it? They don't know that. But yes. Yeah. Well, no, I'm asking. This is. <laughs> yeah. you know, have you guys had a chance Other to talk between not, each not other? Really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded and haven't talked once since. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this should be the first one. Great. I love that. That's exciting for us. Yeah. 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 Maybe not for you guys. <laughs> Exclusivity. Well, yeah. But we'll we'll sit on this and hold it until the album's released. I so hope so. We're not doing any hands <laughs> Um. I like doing that though, I feel like it's cool. We've done it a few times, we've been able to like sit down and have like more of a hangout session talk about it because then it's, we're not very professional, as you guys know. Yeah, I feel very vulnerable in the position right now. <laughs> you wait until I <laughs> swan dive across, across both of you. I don't know if I can trust you guys. Oh, <laughs> you know, I feel like you room, can't. Room you know, 50% of us is untrustable, but you don't know who it is. I we're, played us. We were saying how Angel. Nathan kind of blends in with the sheets. And he's wearing all black, and he's like, you know, the, the devil, devil and the angel yeah. over here. Uh, that makes sense. I'm also kind of wearing white. Yeah, we're going to work this out. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> we're going to fuck you guys up. <laughs> if anyone's fucking people up here, I am infinitely strong. <laughs> That's, I've been training for this moment. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk, talk album, because yep. we've had a while to listen to it. A mm. bunch, which is kind of cool. 
a lot of through stupid streaming systems that are hard to remember the names. So yeah. you have to bear with us here. I might have to pull the phone up, but... We had some fun with the names on this one. Yeah. Did you? I mean, let, like... him, let him finish what he was saying. No! <laughs> this, I don't want to have, like, a question <laughs> answer thing. This is just, like, a conversation. So, yeah, hell yeah. Tell me about that. I want to know... I want to hear stuff that you don't have to do in interviews normally. Like, use us as the preparation before you actually have to talk to real people about it. <laughs> use us as your emotional punching bags. No, I, what, I, what I say earlier was like, this was the prep for the corporate call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can work out being like, oh, I liked that answer. Or, I'm not talking about that again. You're just I'm, the work- I'm not doing the corporate calls. You're just workshop for future interviews. I'm only talking to you guys. <laughs> Great. This is, this is the only interview. That <laughs> 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 is. I like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, talked about the song titles. I, I will say it's still, from a tracklist perspective and the names of it, it sounds like a continuation or, or it still sounds like error songs. Mm-hmm. There is a certain tone, and the lyrics that you use in songs are very clear in the song titles as well. Oh yeah. He's, he's trying to go. It's a roundabout way of saying that you sound smart. Well, actually, though. <laughs> Truly, a little bit more wordsmithy than a lot of bands. It's a little bit deeper. You used the word yeah, alabaster yeah. on the songs, and I had to look up what that meant. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, this one's like, I feel like more. I don't know, dark. I guess. It has. I feel like the the darker tone. Mm-hmm. It's very somber <laughs> in yeah. the. Yeah. I think the sound of the songs, like, like glimpse. It's like a pretty sad sounding song, and uh. I mean, most of the record, like, if you just read it top to bottom, like, it does read kind of like, ugh. Um, <laughs> it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel ugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, ugh, and like, I'm always just like, this feels... Darker? I don't want to say negative, but like, I think a lot of the movies and books that I was ingesting at the time of writing it were, like, pretty, pretty like bleak like like like, like nihil- Bummer films. nihilistic subtext and stuff you <clears> know <throat> like which i'm definitely not a nihilist or anything but just exposing my brain to that much stuff kind of fucked me up a little bit like not to not to do the whole like when the artist gets too close to the project thing but like it really did i feel like like i i feel like i'm like different now <laughs> like do you are you <laughs> conscious that when you like consuming being like Oh, this is making me feel a way. Yeah, I had to stop reading this book. I, it, look, it, have you guys seen True Detective season one? Yes. Yes. It's, like it's, the, only, it's the only season I've watched of that show. It's, yeah, the, okay. it's the only one you have to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, There's good ones, but... Russ, Russ Cole's character is influenced by this book called The Conspiracy Against the Human Race. And a lot of like what he says in the, that movie, like his like, really bleak nihilistic quotes are kind of like lifted from that book. But I had to stop reading that book because it was just like so bleak, and, I, and I, I didn't agree with any of it either. Like it's just, it's like it's so negative. Like it's this guy Thomas Ligotti. He's this horror writer, but he um, he's an antinatalist. Like he thinks we should deny our programming and stop reproducing, which is, is yeah. in True Detective, where like Russ Cole's like we should walk hand in hand brothers and sisters into one last midnight like to walk to our extinction hand in hand or wow. something like um it's not the most uplifting no shit. no yeah I, I had to stop reading that book because i was like this this feels like a virus that i am like willingly saying enter me to and it, it just felt incorrect <laughs> and i just <laughs> i had to stop but uh but yeah so that's kind of the vibe of the record is, uh, <laughs> it's like l- l- like slow sour bleed is like very like there's like a lot of like little tips of the hat to like Russ Cole. R- Russ Cole's my favorite fictional character of all time. Yeah, well, like I said, that's my favorite track on the album so far. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I just think it hits differently, and maybe now I'll look at it differently going back. True. Knowing that. Which is always yeah, an interesting thing as a consumer when, and which is one of the reasons why we love having these in-depth conversations about albums because I feel like the best part about music and lyrics or any sort of literature or art or movie is a lot of the time you can make your own interpretation. Music, mostly, because, you know, over a book or something, it's spread out. It's explained. Mm-hmm. There's character development. In a movie, it's the same, a TV series. But with a song, you've got three minutes and maybe only two minutes of those has words. 
and the choruses are repeated, so you get to make your own interpretation of what they're saying in this mini story. So I always like getting a more in-depth idea of where a song comes from and then going back and listening to it and seeing if that knowledge changes my view of the song at all. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. And then the, with songs, there are like less rules as far as continuity, you know. You have and to, also you have even to have like have a... the logistics of how like some of your lyrics particularly, they don't follow like a, here's the story, follow along. Right. And so like in a book, if you did that, they'd be like, what the fuck? I don't like yeah. it because it doesn't make any sense. But Whereas a song, you kind of expect that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah, like, I used to think that you weren't supposed to do that. Like, like, like Circus Revive has like really random lyrics. So does like the Mars Volta. And, uh, that Mars Volta has really random everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of changed my perspective because like, I was like, oh, this is, I think I like this better. But um, yeah, because sometimes, you know, you'll touch... Like, JT might have a section where he's talking about this thing, and then my section I'm talking about this thing, and they kind of, like, mm-hmm. overlap or whatever, but... Is it hard to marry those ideas is, up sometimes, or you I just guys have just got so well? well we tried. I, I tried really hard to try to marry them, but then I kind of stopped, and it made it better and easier and less stressful, honestly. Oh. I, I think I put too much pressure in trying to, like, make it super cohesive, um, and I just kind of let the song kind of speak for itself. It depends on the circumstance of the song, yeah. but I think that uh, I think it's become less of a priority. Yeah. As long as, as long as each individual line or collection of line, like you know, like as long as I can read e- each line of it and feel good about that on its own, mm. I, I'm not really too concerned about it about everything just like being like strict strictly to this one subject yeah. or. Or, or whatever because like I don't know like I don't know like um when you talk about like the album having a tone and overall being like a darker tone yeah is that something that you like you're saying there like you're not really considering what the next thing is all in this bit you're happy with but then it all sort of ties in together yeah is that just yeah. because that's the phase you're in and, and no matter what you're writing it's all along the same feeling yeah, and and then that's why record I, like yeah, because the each record's sort of a moment. It kind of it's kind it's kind of just like capturing whatever moment we were in during that time they were writing those lyrics, you know. Yeah. Because this one, yeah, I was like reading that fucking book, and then I was watching this movie. That like the 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 name of the record is um. It's named after this movie. I was I was watching this like. Ari Aster, he directed Hereditary and Midsummer mm. and stuff. It, he was doing like a Criterion Collection Closet Picks YouTube video where they have directors come in and like just like pick DVDs that influence them and then talk about them. Oh, yeah. But he grabbed this movie that I never heard of and he said, There's an argument to be made that Kyoshi Kurosawa's Cure is the greatest film ever made. And I was like, Well, I gotta watch I guess that. I gotta watch that. <laughs> because Ari Aster, like, I loved his movies, so I was like, All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this movie. And it, like, blew my mind. And it is pretty... It's a bleak movie. And it's so good. And I was like, that's, the name, the, that's the name of the record. Cure. Never. I don't even know. I, he's mentioned this before. I still have never seen him. Yeah. Is but, it something uh, you would recommend to other people? Or are you worried you're going to fuck them up? Both, probably. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, is, it is something I'd recommend. Your discretion advised? It, I mean, it, it, it's like... It, it's A lot of people will hate the way that that it tells the story and the way it ends it's like you know it's like it's like an art house kind of movie but like it's, it's a movie you'll think about for a while and, and read up on and but from there i just kind of like went down the rabbit hole with just consuming content like that and just like i don't know yeah so the the, the record does read kind of like ugh, but uh but, well, but, it, but it, sounds it ends great. on a good note. I I I, I read, like after we were, like when we were tracking in, I wrote all the all the, all the lyrics. We had the tracklist thing. I went through and I read, just like the first song, Cure, just top to bottom, all the way to the last song, Wave, and like, I really liked the way it read, just like on paper, and I liked how, the whole record is just like very, bleak and melancholy. But then the last like two lines of the record, are positive, and I was like, yeah. Disaster. That's the good stuff. It's I like, win. It's like a little flicker of light in the darkness, you know? Shit, that is hilarious. Do you think about, like, what's next? 
Like uh, post post cure? Yeah, I know this is like a stupid crazy question. Because you're like, the album's yeah, not even yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gonna creep up sooner than we think. That's exactly sure. it. And like, does having that as like a final note? He's like, always got something in the chamber ready to go, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I like these lyrics the most, I think. I think these, these might be cool. my favorites, but I don't want to like, I don't know. I went to like a weird place <laughs> writing this shit. What weird place are we going to next? You know, I don't know. Hopefully something a little bit lighter. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's not really a song like Vanish Canvas on the record, like, where it's like, oh, this is a hopeful song. <laughs> yeah. Just playing, I mean, you obviously haven't played any of it. You've played one song of it live so far. Yeah. But is that something that you from experience in previous albums, like putting that music out there and being able to share it and, and as Johnny said before, like people kind of make up their own stories about it. Maybe people aren't going to get that like nihilistic approach from it. I think a lot of people don't even listen to the lyrics. So do you actually. think with that, yeah. it's going to change your perspective of the songs and where you wrote them over time? Like has that happened with previous, like off self-titled, were there songs there that after a while you're playing them, you're like, this now means a different thing to me because we played it this way and seeing the audience react to it, I don't view it in the same way. Does that make sense? I guess it's possible. I haven't really I don't, come across that, though. I actually disconnect from the meanings of the songs and, and the origins of the compositions in the live setting. So, sure. like, so the performance is its own entity. Yes, yeah, for sure. Entirely. Like, yeah. what, that's why I love performing, because it's kind of, like, detached from, uh, you know, the whole, like, mental deep dive of trying to get the lyrics right. Because, yeah, a lot of people don't care about lyrics, but, like, I care so much about lyrics. And, like, the fact that a lot, a lot of people don't care about it makes me want to like put more work into it because I'm like well this is like a piece of the writing process that is like very often overlooked or viewed as not important so it's like this is like an opportunity to like be a band that really dials that in mm -hmm. and cares about that part as well um, but in the, in the live setting uh, it, it's just about the performance it's like just about the instrumental and the way the song feels and flows and like yeah, okay. that interaction with the crowd also, um, not to dumb down the but, scene, but you are in a scene where people are just, like, waiting for the breakdown. Exactly. So. Yeah. But with that said, <clears throat> last night in Brisbane, I did feel kind of connected to a lot of what we were singing about on stage just because I've just been anxious lately. So, like, I feel like I needed the show more than usual. Mm. Yeah, cool. So I think, like, my anxiety kind of propelled my performance to be better because it was... It wasn't just like, oh, it's time to go out and do our job. It was like, I like need, I, I need, need this to to stage, that yeah. release. Yeah, that's kind of cool thing to have that as a consistent thing to use as a tool to. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so weird when you like take like three or four months off and then you're just like sometimes I don't know how to be home. Yeah, you know, and then I like kind of like forget that I do this thing and then we go back out and do it and I'm like. Oh yeah, like this. I feel normal. <laughs> this again. is fun. Like, I love this. Yeah. 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 Talk to me about. This is so Jesse folks. I'm so sorry. But you can contribute after. I'm chilling. Yeah, we'll <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know I can talk. I do. We talk. <laughs> we talk. <laughs> but I do want to like. I want to talk about your vocals in this because I feel like your vocal tone and this you've taken a new approach to it, which I think puts you at the best you've ever sounded. Thanks. This is not to blow smoke. Agreed. He actually said, wait until you see how much I blow smoke. <laughs> Watch me do it, Joe. Yeah, yeah. compliment him so fucking much. <laughs> but actually, I feel like you've, your range and your tone sounds so natural and comfortable in this. Do you feel that performing when you're recording it? Or is that a conscious yeah. thing? Actually, it's a, a lot of it is like lower. Yeah, yeah but, I noticed that. But that's, a, that's actually less comfortable um, mm. and I know a lot of people like people who are accustomed to people who think of my singing and they think of higher range you know Anthony Green Cove Reber kind of singing vocals they will if, if they're looking at it just from that lens they might think that this record there was like an intention, intentional drop off yeah but, but it wasn't it was really just about like doing the kind of vocal that seemed appropriate for the song you know, like in a song like Idlewild or Pale Iris, that's like a more traditional style air mm -hmm. chorus. The song Into Excess, yep. especially, uh, Wave, 
like so there are moments where it feels like it's in that comfort range of sort of what people are, are comfortable hearing me sound like but then there's songs like slow sour bleed to where it's like i'm not gonna sing that like I, I should not sing this chorus this is not that kind of song it just kind of called for like a lower sort of verse and cure is another one where like cure you know we were just like just it just needs to be more of like an instrument like like, like my chorus like it's more of like an instrument it sounds kind of like a more like a, a guitar lead and we just yeah. buried it in reverb and delay and it kind of has this it's just about like creating a vibe and that's kind of how a lot of the a lot of the songs sort of that's sort of what they called for was just sort of like an atmosphere layer versus a big powerful catchy chorus glimpse is another great example like i love the chorus of glimpse but it's like so understated and quiet and like haunting and we liked it so much we like did the outro with it and it just like loops on and on mm-hmm. and on you kind of get lost in it like one harmony starts getting a little bit louder while the other one starts the main starts dropping out quieter and they're like kind of moving around yeah there's there's a lot of 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 moving parts in the vocals through that and i I noticed that as well because one of the first things i noticed was there was that lower register it was a bit more sort of 50 50 on you guys with the vocals but then again like we see you furthering what you do vocally as well throughout the album like much more than you've ever done was that like just because you wanted to try more of that sort of stuff or was it what the song's called for or did you want you know a a more sort of melodic vocal but a different tone or you know sound to to jesse's parts because it would add something different to that part of the song i mean all of that really um kind of exploring what we have on the record already what we have on that song uh what complements the part the best um yeah, we, we yeah. really are just going part by part yeah. by part, song by song, piece like by looking piece. Looking at it as a like, whole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where it's like 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 all right, this is where we're at with the song. What is appropriate here? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's not like like it's not like us being like, what if we? JT doesn't have a part here. He needs a part here, type of thing. You know. It doesn't sound. It's not. Like, yeah, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not. It's not like this song is going to be the ballad. This is the one that we're going yeah. to push yeah. to the yeah. radio, or, or like this is going to be the one where we this. It's like let's just start writing the song and then see what see it calls it for, and just let it take shape on its own kind of thing. I feel yeah. like the harmonies as well. Like you said that when you guys are harmonizing, particularly when you're doing cleans, it's much more like because your tone's a little bit lower there. It's much more interchangeable harmonies. So like you can. I think because we know you guys so well and we've listened to so much, mm-hmm. we can hear. But there are moments where I think someone new to the band might be like, I don't know which one's doing that. Yeah. yeah that sure. Because you're stretching your range in quite a lot of the parts as well. Which me? Is, yeah. Yeah. Are you, how are you feeling with put all me, that sort of stuff? Put like, me through boot camp. <laughs> it's good though. <laughs> I, I mean, learned. Good. You're getting more it's comfortable good. with that sort of stuff. And yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. from, you know, a, a year or two ago versus like this past year, I've done a lot more. A lot more singing live. Is it to the point now where, not to say that you weren't enjoying it before, but you in in a comfortable position enough where you're, you know, less worried about am I going to nail this live? But oh, I'm really looking forward to doing this live. Or is it something you don't think of, and I've just put a shitty idea in you? No, like, I mean, Fuck. Uh, I like to crush even the you know the deepest bellow growl as I do like the soaring singing part like they're all they all deserve a hundred percent of focus um I'm very very particular about like nailing everything and I get bummed when I have to bail on something live um but yeah some of these songs will definitely push both of us what songs are this is I want individual answers currently (laughs) are you most excited to share live crawl Crawl backwards for sure. sure. Just, I've just sure. always just been a sucker for the heavy songs. Yeah, yeah, that that song's dope. That's me. I'm excited um, to think about like the the visuals for some of these too. Yeah, live. Yeah, sick. I I actually kind of like the songs that are a little bit easier to play live, and that one is not that easy actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've said that I regret it. <laughs> crawl, yeah, cr- 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 crawl backwards is like, it's kind of like it's gonna be sick live, but like, uh, I'm excited about. Slow Sour Bleed. Mm-hmm. Um, that one for sure. That one's fun. Um, Do you have different ideas on, on what you're looking forward to playing live the most due to the fact that you are doing vocals and guitar? Yeah. So yeah. it's hard to kind of pick one? Yeah, the, the songs I enjoy playing live are the songs where I get a little bit of a respite from doing so many, wearing Anything. so many hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like Scorpion Hymn is like a really fun song because I don't have to sing 
and the riffs are mostly just like groovy like low string riffs and stuff so i can just like i like to be more physical on stage like i like to you know do like Stage moves and like super run villain. around. Yeah, we've seen you. Yeah, super yeah. That, that, that's my Medical favorite. Super villain. That's my villain. favorite. Uh, that's what I like to. That's my. That's when I'm having the most fun on stage. Is when I'm like able to run around and hop around and spin around and go to the floor and fucking wiggle around and stuff. Sometimes like, I'll be on the riser and have to check my periphery to make sure he's not sliding across <laughs> the stage behind me. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes again. That was prob. That, like that stage presence was probably like a result of just being like oh my god like playing the songs where I'm just like so hyper focused yeah, and like, I'm sure. like singing especially back when I used to use a pedal board because you know mm. like oh, you're yeah. hitting pedals for delay to get a solo and then you're like going up to the mics you're hitting pedal and you're singing you're like there's just so much to do and think about so I like doing that too on guitar solo but it's, as well I love how you managed to convince the guys to let you have a guitar solo on the second song of the album as well it's just like oh, those yeah. are just a shreddy solo it's like ah oh, there we go the solos, I'm glad you brought that up because that was that was another thing that we're like we were just doing what the song was called for and then or, or what what each song called for and then the result was that there's only one solo on the record, which someone's gonna not like that. But mm. like but th- that's just the way it turned out. Like it wasn't like a plan, it wasn't like no solos on this record. Like you know, remember Metallica had that one record? Yeah. And they're like, No solos <laughs> And Kirk's just like, Well, I guess I'll go fuck myself. Yeah. <laughs> Like, there was no conversation like that. It's just, like, that was a part in the record where I was like, there needs to be a solo here. And then after the record was done, I was like, that was the only moment on the whole record where I felt that way. Hmm. How does it go as a unit, as, like, as a band with that sort of stuff? Is there any, like, conflict or, hey, I really want to do this, you didn't write a part for this thing? Or is it very much like, sick, that's just what we're doing and we'll get in and... Connor will speak up whenever he feels like we're... Because I think Connor's probably the most attuned to the fan base. Yeah. Um, so, if he feels like there's like too much of a neglect from what people like have come to like want and expect out of us, like he'll he'll definitely like bring it up to me and be like, you know, like you haven't really done this or like people are gonna talk about it. Like if you're cool with that, you might want to do this or whatever or like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. like and then I'll I'll consider that and. We'll Do any there. songs come to mind on this album where that was the case and, and, and a part was added or a moment just, was added? Well, just kind of the record as a whole just being so, like, rhythmic-oriented. Mm. Like, it's, uh... There's more, like... Uh, the, the way I've been putting it is, like, as far as guitar, like, there's a lot of, like, right-hand technicality where usually the... Where the yeah, I noticed that as well, which is why I, when we checked out the, the song, like, I was like, oh, my sugar. You know, like you had yeah. that, that pattern, and then there's a lot of that sort of tool esque sort of right. style riffing. Right, that's just been the the sort of the mode that I've been in. So I just, yeah, it's more of a groovy sort of like rhythmic record. So it's, that was something he brought up where he was like, some people will wish that there was like, you know, more solos or whatever. And I was like, oh, I, I, I was like, I'm okay with that because I think I really like the songs. I think it's more with a live setting. Because so much of your back catalogue has that stuff. We, as you, we have so much of that stuff. Yeah, yeah as you yeah. intersperse more and more of the newness into it, it's going to allow the more highlights mm-hmm. for the people that want that, or people that want the more groovy stuff. It's going to give a more like even balanced set, yeah. list, I think, because yeah. you're still going to have those moments. So like, it, we talked about before, like that line of people being like, oh, like your old stuff, that stuff still exists. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. He add this in now, it's going to give like a full flavored meal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Every chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, like it, it's to me, it it, it is a, a different sort of record for us. And what's so funny is that there's still people that'll hear it and be like, "I saw something like somebody like made a post or a tweet or something, and it was just like, uh, like headline like Era releases a new song, and it sounds just like every other Era it's song the, ever released." That was, oh. that was the that was the Twitter page we were talking about like. Uh, Thirty uh, minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. People are well, fuckwits. Uh, <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't offend me. I like yeah. the song. Oh, no, no, I'm saying. But you're a fuckwit. <laughs> if you see Zinu. Yeah, well, it's, it's well, quick, well, it's, like, well, what's funny about that is I was just like, I was like, this is definitely like kind of a different vibe for us. Like, 
<laughs> like, oh, the he cure did, is definitely. He did not get it. like the if you hear cure and think that I'm like you're not even. You're not listening. You're not, you're listening. Like, you're not yeah, listening. You're not hard. listening. You're hearing, but you're not listening. Yeah. People, I think people who are like attuned to Era and like listen to Era and like have heard all our records, they will hear this and be like, "This is a little different." Like all of our friends we've showed, they're like, "It's definitely different." Yeah. But, but what they've said along with that is, it's also very much an Era record. Like it's, well, that's it's, one it's of the things that I said to Nate. I was like, because we've spoken about it a bit together. Um, we talk outside the channel, and if you guys know, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're by what you we're say, real friends. Friends. we are actually friends. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're buddies. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I said. I was we were talking on the phone. I said it sounds it sounds like error, but it's at the same time so different. And you know, in a scene where you see bands like Bring Me the Horizon and Architects do these huge shifts that people mm -hmm. that people really call them out on it's a pretty probably like you know unintentional feat by you guys to still sound like era but sound so completely different and i think it's because i think the reason why this record still does sound like us and it's different is because of what i said earlier of just like approaching the song based off of what the song calls for mm. and what it needs and not forcing the big soaring chorus or forcing the solo or forcing this or that because there's an expectation from the fan base because that in my opinion is a is one of the reasons why neon is not one of my more it's my, my it's my least preferred era record i'll put it that way oh, okay. but part of that is because with the neon it was coming off of drift people like drift drift was kind of a shift in sound for us in a really good direction in my opinion and um with the neon I had these like internal rules in my head of like, well, we need to do this because this sounds more like what we would do on Drift or like, ah, well, if we're going to do this dark kind of like heavy song, we got to put in an era chorus to make it work like yeah. Valhalla, you know, like, but on the self-titled, I was like, I don't want to do that because I think that actually hurt the songwriting to just like be Kate accidentally catering to fan expectations and not doing what we want to do or doing well, it what the sets song them up to expect for. and feel entitled to a sound that they want in further records and I think that's it makes you sound hard. predictable too yeah, for like, sure it's like, it's, it's it's like now you know exactly what we're going to do you know we're going to have yeah, this mm -hmm. big chorus here whatever but um but like with like Valhalla I would say on the self-titled a song like Scorpion Him it Scorpion Him is, is kind of the way that I would have written Valhalla off of Neon to where, like, I wouldn't have yeah. thrown the chorus in, I wouldn't have done just yeah. sort of the melodic stuff, because, like, it, Scorpion Hymn doesn't need that. Scorpion Hymn mm. just needs to be a heavy song. It's kind of like what you did with Crawl Back, where it said, like, two or three variations before we finished Crawl that Backwards song. Crawl is a good example, too. Like, yeah. like if, it, if you threw in, like, a like a soaring era, like, Seosin-style chorus and Crawl Backwards, it would ruin the song. That's just not what the song yeah. calls for. The, yeah. so, the song needs to be grimy and gross and like and the lyric the, the lyrics too like you know we, we write the lyrics based off of the, the sound and the energy of the song and like crawl backwards out of heaven those lyrics are fucking awesome i'm, I'm so, so yeah proud i'm excited yeah. to perform yeah. that song but it's, but it's like grimy and it's dark and it's just like oh this is so it's like there's a sadness to it it's almost like that like black metal where it's yeah. like it's heavy metal music but it's like there's something like deeply melancholy mm -hmm. to it. It does stand out yeah. when Jay and I spoke the other day, I was like, initial songs, there was two that I could be like, these are the first two standouts for me, and that was one. Yeah. And then the second track, I think only because we'd heard Cure a bunch. Remember, right? So, yeah. by the time I got to that, that was like the first like standout to me because I'd heard the other yeah. track before. But yeah, Crawl Back. It's got, the second track has a familiar era vibe to it as well, while still sounding progressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of intentional too. It was yeah. like, it was like two tracks, two and three. Rumor of Light, Idlewild. We're like, all right, like, we'll front load these a little bit, just so people know, like, we're still here, we're still yeah. doing that. Yeah. Thing. But then, like, once you like get over, once you get to like track four on, oh yeah, it's like anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, point, start like, getting on the like, record, like the the more uh, like dance elements through there like the electronic yeah. elements and things like that yeah. caught me by surprise and I know you guys have dabbled with sounds in the past but I was like oh hold on a, a second that's well, a little that's Bronstein the, influence too. yeah yeah that, Hello, what? that's the benefit Dan. That, that's definitely the benefit of having Dan Bronstein produce because he's like like very 
very good with production and yeah, those cool. kind of sounds like, like that like dance section and slow sour bleed like that's that's Dan just working with sounds and putting stuff together you that know? let him cook when it gets cook. released is going straight on my synth cool playlist <laughs> nice. just cause that's where it fits in I heard it I was like oh, got another addition to the playlist <laughs> which it, was Craw, Crawl Backwards is a song too like he, yeah. he, he added so much character to Crawl Backwards by adding all the grimy effects and then when the song ends like it's actually playing backwards like that was mm. that that's sort of the magic of of Dan. Is he's like adding all these like little touches to like add character. Dan the magic man. Dan the man. Yeah. Which I, were for you I, guys? I, I don't want to be. Rude. We are running out of time yeah. really fast. They need to get ready, so we need to wrap we up. That flew by. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. You hang with friends, you have a good time. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, ask you a question. Which were the most difficult tracks for you guys individually? to record and which was the most difficult as a band collectively to record or to get to get that final product out of uh, which was the most difficult to record yeah well the, yeah the to get the right in the time. studio yeah, yeah, yeah. here it took a while for the end at least to get right yeah that's one kind of wrote itself though because like and that was the last it, one it, we it recorded too yeah oh. uh i would say mm, wave took a little bit oh <laughs> Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Reverie, like. Oh, those takes. Oh yeah. Well, Don't, that, but yeah. but but just like getting that song to, to to its final product, like that song like changed keys and modes, and I had that riff, that main opening riff, like I had that riff for a couple of years and just didn't know what to do with it. So there's like yeah. a lot of different versions of that song that kind of happened. Before That's fine. Reverie. I, I like, like when you have that because then those songs can remix down the track. Yeah, I love that song. Right. It's, like, it's a beautiful song. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. Thanks. Yeah, um, that one's that one's cool. Mm. Uh, it's like Incubus vibes. That's, that's yeah. What it, or, or Dan calls it the Urban Outfitters song. I even got like slight Perfect Circle vibes in the album. Yeah, you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, no, there's definitely like Tool influence is definitely on this record, and we like a Perfect Circle also. Like, I mean, and Pussifer. Like, we, mm-hmm. like all those all those projects. I'm glad this is going to come out after the album drops because everyone's going to be like, "Well, can I hate this album?" They're not even talking about breakdowns at all. <laughs> <laughs> but about there are some crushing, sure. fucking heavy moments. There's a lot of really yeah. Crushing I think that's, moments. that's yeah. they're the things you don't need to talk about because, like you said, that's you know right. those, there's going to be those moments. Mm-hmm. You've got your vocals, which yeah. just speak for themselves. A massive on this album as well. The, by the way, the thing I'll say about the the what you kind of address your question is. Dan didn't care as much about like me kind of going a buck wild on like lows and highs. He was listening for nuance mm. and tonality, and there was a lot of like that wasn't it. And I was like, I crushed it. He's like, No, that's not what I'm looking for. And he'll have me do it again. He's like, That's what I want. I'm like, Okay. And like, it yeah, took me a while to kind of figure out his his yeah, method, cool. but it like it added it did add a lot to the the takes and the the nuances of all the screams. It's always cool when you can actually yeah. hear that. He just hears it differently. Yeah, and, yeah, and just cool. rather than taking it personally, it's like he'll, he'll hear it too though. I want to say my well. favorite take on the record of yours. Which was which and it's was, also my favorite lyrics. Is it a crawl? Which I wrote, but <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a crawl? I nailed it. It's, it's crawl. But, but but it's my favorite vocal performance of your. That song is my favorite vocal performance in the beginning. Ever done. Yeah, wake into the dark from a comatose nightmare to live and die bleeding within a crude miracle. Yeah, I, I'm very proud of that as well. But that that's just, so thank you for setting it. Thank you for the alley oop so I could dunk it. Oh, <laughs> what a team! Well, well it, it, it's like it's like it's like when the like it's how could you not say those words and sit, not sound pissed off? Yeah, it's just like this face when you're like. Ugh. I feel like I listened to that. The face grime. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, stank face. The yeah, stank face. yeah. Well, dude, thanks, thanks so much. We love you guys. We love the album. Yeah, we genuinely love you guys. Love yeah. You. So I, 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 I tried to go into this not thinking about. It's Connor. Come on, show your face. You can come. He's not going to. Is it? He's going to stand there. Yeah, I tried to listen to this with like putting aside to cool. my affections for you guys as people to just be like just listen Good. to his music because. Yes. Please do that. Yeah, you can get. I feel like I get tainted by it sometimes. Being like, but I love him so much. I just want to start. But like, get yeah, all bias aside, it's fucking sick. You yeah, like, crushed it. Yeah. I'm really proud of what you guys have done, Thanks. and you should be. And I'm so excited for people to hear it. And it's they only have to wait not that long, which is cool. Not at all. No. Yeah. I mean, by the time this is out, you won't be waiting at all. It's out. So yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Thanks, guys. Get out of the bed. You've got a rock and roll show to play. I'm going I'm to bed. Stiff. Yeah. <laughs>